to all our listeners today and thank you for joining the Ranset Employer Brand Research Webinar for 2020, hosted by Ranset Leader Connect platform. It's a pleasure to have an esteemed panel of guests over here with me. And uh, let me first begin introducing our guests to the listeners. So let me welcome first Mr. Paul Dupuy, MD and CEO of Ranset India. Welcome, Paul, to the webinar. Uh, I would now welcome uh, Ira Gupta, who is Head Human Resources, Microsoft India. Welcome, Ira. And I now move on to Deepti. Uh, Deepti Verma is the Head Human Resource Director for APAC and Middle East for Amazon Corporate. Welcome, Deepti, to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. And I move on to Preeti Malhotra, our special guest for the webinar today. She's a practice head and partner for Great Place to Work Institute India. Uh, it's really inspiring to have all of you join us today here for the webinar, and I'm sure the audience is also looking at a very, very exciting session today. Uh, we must say that there are 700 plus people who have registered for the webinar today, so it's going to be insightful for the participants as well as for us at Transcat. Without further ado, I will now request Paul to give the opening address for the special web webinar that we are hosting today. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Anjali, and greetings to all the panelists who are joining us here today. Thank you for, for coming along on this very special day. Today, we celebrate excellence and employer branding. I'm going to talk about what that means here in a moment. But first, the Randstad Employer Brand Research is a flagship study that's been done every year now for more than 20 years. And here in India, it's been held 10 years in a row. And what we're really looking for is who are the best companies in terms of culture, in terms of attracting talent, developing, of course, retaining the talent in a highly competitive environment? And it's more than just reputation. It's about companies that are walking the talk, that not only have a vision, but that live and breathe it every single day, and that treat people as the most important asset in the company. And we're going to celebrate companies who have done that or are doing that uh, even now. Now, with the COVID crisis, we're entering into a new world. Clearly, employer branding takes on a whole new shape. Uh, just before we came live today, we had a good conversation with our panelists. We talked about the old days of employer branding, where part of the story was the physical location, where we worked, the office. And I've been to many of the companies here that are represented on our panel. I've been to your offices. I've seen your wonderful locations. I've seen uh, the amazing cafeterias that some of you offer and, and snacks and all that great stuff that helped to attract talent and keep talent. But now we're in a new world where that becomes perhaps even irrelevant. It's less about the physical stuff. It's more about what you stand for, the greater purpose, and again, how we treat our people. And so today we're going we're gonna to recognize uh, those who have excelled in employer branding, um, and we're going to hear from those who are leading this quest to become the top talent magnet in India and beyond. Uh, I'd like to say that, first of all, uh, as we've been doing this in you know, over the past 10 years, and I've been very fortunate over the past almost four years uh, to be leading the charge here with Randstad India, we've held physical Randstad Employer Branding uh, reward, Awards events. So we've gone all over the country, we've had big events in Mumbai and Delhi and Bangalore. And typically they were held in a nice hotel and we'd have three to 400 people with you know, a keynote speaker and so on and we do the awards. Well, today we're doing the same thing except we're taking it virtual. There's no physical stage, we've got a virtual stage. We've got all of our representatives of companies that are excelling in employer branding here. And we have more than three to 400 people. The latest count is well over 500. We're probably gonna head to close to a thousand. Isn't that amazing? Who would have thought that we could do that? So a lesson learned already for all of us. The fact that we have so many people here today spanning the four corners of India and beyond. We also have people joining us today from outside India. Uh, it, it really is an indication and proof that employer branding is more important than ever. The ability to attract the best talent, to develop, to retain, uh, and to build a company which is future-proof. It all starts with people. So on that note, it's my pleasure to announce the winners of the 2020 Randstad Employer Brand Research. First, I'd like to begin with our second runner-up. The second runner-up is Amazon India. They continue their winning streak. Amazon India 
in, uh, in 2018, we're the first runner up and in 2019 as well. So to Amazon India, I actually have the trophy. This is not a virtual trophy. It's the real <laughs> <Thank> trophy. <you. laughs> Let me tell you, you've held this before. It's extremely heavy, you know, right? Yes, and yes. So I, I, well, I've got the real trophy. I'm presenting it to you virtually. Congratulations. You can take it. Thank you. Me. I accept <laughs> it virtually. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And well done again to everybody at Amazon. My pleasure. Moving on. And we're going to hear from you later, Deepti, about how you've done it. Huh? Uh, moving on. The first runner up among 150 companies that we selected through this very detailed survey, Samsung, is awarded the first runner up among the top 10 most coveted employer brands in 2018 and in 2019, 2020, the first runner up. Mayank, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> trophy, <sir. laughs> well done, look forward thank to hearing you. from you and more on how Samsung has done it. And finally, the winner of the Ransom Employer Brands Brand Research Award this year is Microsoft. Microsoft was the winner of the title from 2011 to 2014, continued to be among the top three most coveted employer brands in 2019 as well. I must say a very warm congratulations, Ira. And there you are, your trophy virtually presented to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Most appreciated, Congrats. thank you. Thank you and look forward to hearing from you as well about how you've done it and, and the way forward into the new world. We will come and see you in some way, shape or form to present this trophy to you. I always enjoy that moment. I always enjoy coming to visit you and presenting it face to face. We will find a moment when it's the right moment to do that. But for now, congratulations. And we look forward to having a wonderful discussion today. Anjali, back to you. Thank you so much, Paul. And congratulations to all the winners. And this makes the webinar special as well because the audience gets to hear perspectives from this group and I'm sure they are really looking forward to this one. So, um, as we begin and we move into the Q&A session for today, uh, you know, as just one thing just I wanted to share with the audience as well with the group before we get into the question is that work from home, I'm sure at least in this group must have been part of your culture all throughout. But today work from home is more of a compulsion and less of a choice uh, for people. And you see the personal and the professional life kind of getting re really, uh, you know, in intermingling or uh, intertwining with each other and the lines are really blurring. In this situation, we definitely see that organizations have to start thinking about how the future is going to look like. So with that, I'll first uh, go to Mayang to ask my first question. So Mayang, the question to you is that, you know, in the COVID scenario, you know, work from home is something most organizations are embracing. But what has been your experience at Samsung in terms of really working around with it? And do you really see there is a measurable impact on the employee productivity and the culture at the organization? I'm sure many of those who have joined today are new to this concept and may look forward to some insights from your end in terms of what can they really do. I also want to bring a little bit of an l and uh, spin to this question because you know people are really grappling with a new world of work and uh, organizations have to work towards enabling our people. So what kind of meaningful L&D interventions are you really looking at in your organization? So over to you, Mayank. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you. Thanks for uh, invitation. Now, before I get into answering some of your questions, you know, I want the entire group to think about six months back, let's say you were sitting in a meeting room, boardroom, along with your management team, and the discussions were on the uh, business continuity plan that we were all preparing for. Most of the scenarios on which we were working that time were primarily related to, okay, if my factory gets shut down, okay, if my, uh, the one of the, you know, there is a talent loss, then how do I prepare my, my business continuity? Or could we maximum towards, let's say, a flood coming, or maybe a maximum to maximum is the war zone. But had any organization ever thought about a situation wherein the entire globe comes to a halt and then you will have to see that how your business continuity works. And that's the situation we all are into today, right? Now, this is not the first time that humans are facing such kind of a challenge. It's been ages that, you know, many such events or pandemics have come, but it's because we are the most intelligent and the most adaptable creature on the planet, it becomes, we have always fought and we have always come uh, as a winner and I'm sure that this time also we will come as a winner but yes when such kind of unprecedented events occur 
unprecedented situations come, they come up with a lot of challenges and these challenges are unprecedented in themselves. And to manage them, you have to have very unprecedented ways of working. That's what we have all have been experiencing for last three months. You know, uh, Samsung as an organization, we never had a situation wherein 100% of our people will be working work from home. That too for a, such a long period of time. We never tested our IT systems to such an extent. Uh, organization which is into sales, you know, as a sales organization, the primary task of a sales manager when he is pretty task oriented because at the start of the day, he has to plan his day like, uh, you know, what is my personal journey plan? How many outlets I have to visit? What is that I will do at the outlet? How do I look at, you know, the business discussions which I have to do with my partners? Most of these things were primarily, and when for a sales organization, is primarily that you look at going to market, sitting in front of the people, and then interacting with them. Three months or four months' time has completely changed this. You, our outlook of managing or people managing the, their work has moved a lot from a task orientation to now the result orientation because they they have uh, you know not uh, changed themselves in terms of the changing environment but also they have made their partners also change to the changing environment and the requirement now the entire business planning which is done with the people is mostly over these uh, uh, you know it connected solutions and the learning curve of our people if you see this is more steeper now uh, we find solutions to the problems which never have happened earlier. I'll give you an example. We have, uh, you know, something called as service centers. So we have a lot of services that we provide to our customers, technical support. So I was having a discussion with my service head. And one of the example that he gave is that today customer does not want to visit the customer service centers. They want an untouched service. So how do we get into that situation of wherein we change our teams from uh, a more of a personalized service which is when you will greet meet handshake you know give them the warmth to a completely untapped service is what we call it uncontact service so the teams have started working towards that they've been talking about it as i mentioned the work from home for us was very very different uh, we have never had a situation when 100 percent of people will be working from home. many of the managers and many of the employees experienced it for the first time and hence it led to some of the you know i would say that uh, the from an employee perspective the new paradigm of work life balances started emerging earlier the definition of work life balance was i start my day at 8 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning rushing towards my office working day in day completely hard evening again late night sometimes because of meetings and then going back to my work or home completely stressed a lot of work, uh, work life balance getting mismatched. Today they are sitting at home and the paradigm has shifted that how do I balance my personal life versus my professional life when my, my family is sitting with me. At the other end, we have managers who, because they were first time managing their teams uh, remotely, it again came as a, a big challenge for them. For a salesperson, it is always easier to, you know, when they get into the engagement with their people, it is talking about what happened yesterday. What is the kind of sales that you did yesterday? When you have a period of six months, when you don't have, or three months, when you don't have a sales, how do you engage with these people? When we got these kind of challenges in front of us, the, we thought that you know it is important that to keep our people engaged and then their productivity needs to be increased. There is something that we have to do and there are some sort of interventions that we have to come up with. We started off with a program which we, uh, when we first connected with our leadership team, called them for uh, talking to our people directly, telling them about the tips of how sitting at the home, they can certainly uh, create a difference between home and work and then be more productive. For managers, we, uh, we primarily looked at the middle management so that you know, there is, uh, we can coach them in terms of how they can manage their teams better while sitting remotely couple of points which came up was that how do you build trust because the trust is the crux of everything you know it's the foundation of all manager or employee relationships individualize your uh, recognition care for your people because the 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 kind of impact that you're going to create today is going to be long lasting these relationships are going to last for long right most important the communication that our people do with a with, with the, while you're sitting in front and then you are dictating the uh, you know you're telling the task or you're having interaction with your people now you're sitting remotely so 
make sure that your communication to your people is very very clear the roles the clarity of the goals that needs to be managed and at last uh, also believe in the talent also believe that the the performance that they're giving that they are sitting at home it's not that easy for them also but at the same time they're giving those kind of uh, you know performance to you and hence these uh, they, they need to be recognized right we uh, have now looking at the kind of you know uh, experiences that we got in last couple of months we have started as an organization started thinking about the roles which will be permanently working from home now or maybe hybrid roles so from an organization wherein everyone used to come to office suddenly you have a shift which is coming in terms of culture or in terms of uh, changes uh, you know which is happening in behavior or base of working is moving towards a more hybrid model now this will lead to more satisfied employees is what i believe and then obviously at the end the the bottom line or the real estate costs may also go down so looking at the productivity part this is something that we have started doing uh, the result uh, the challenges which came in uh, front of us in the month of may till today the people have started uh, put in a lot of efforts in terms of understanding their way their work the sales team generally they don't spend too much of time in uh, understanding data points their day in day out role is to get the sales today they got a time a lot of time understanding data they learn their skills we have very robust I, uh, idp system they spend a lot of times understanding their own needs uh, so this is what we have done in terms of ensuring that the productivity of our people increases the result of it is that uh, once the market starts opening in the month of mid of may and june uh, we have almost come to the normal in the terms of our sales and that's that's because our people were very adaptable and that's the primary reason being one of the values that samsung has is change and which is there in people the adaptability that they have uh, coming to the last part of your question anjali which is on the learning and development now you know uh, i was thinking that you know three months back or four months back when you used to have training programs in the offices you will have a full-fledged batch of about 25 30 people sitting in a room uh, having a training program which lasts for about two days three days it is not possible today you can't have people sitting in front of laptop for two days continuously so the training programs have completely gone and changed wherein we earlier if let's say there are 10 things that we used to teach to our people in those two days chances are that after three months or six months they will only pick up a couple of things today the training programs have become very very personalized i know that what i need to learn if out of six seven habits of highly effective people i only want to pick one i don't want to listen about six seven others i have that flexibility and that's where the organization is moving today uh, we prepare training programs which last for not more than about two hours at, at a stretch very focused very sharp focus talking to the point what is the need that for the uh, uh, you know for the employee uh, digitization has also helped us yes there is a whole whole lot of training programs which are available digitally on the uh, platforms that we are on a uh, couple of trainings a couple of uh, you know i would say that uh, the learning needs that are that have emerged of this situation is one is uh, the managing ambiguity the way the ambiguity has the, we have seen the ambiguity in last six months or so and which is going to continue it has a very strong learning for all of us how do we manage this ambiguity and how do we manage our work accordingly is going to be the key for every organization digital savvy another one because digitization which started about two years back the pace at which it has changed in last few months is something which is also happening so these are a couple of things that I thought that I'll share that uh, the way this uh, the entire journey is changing from a culture perspective, from the ways of working to the learning and development needs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayank, for uh, for such a you know detailed answer. In fact, I'm sure that many people must have taken notes in terms of what could they do. Uh, very quickly, before I move on to Deepthi for my next question, uh, there is an interesting rebel uh, survey that we did just before COVID hit India. And the survey was around what is it that employees seek in an employer? And the top three responses that we had received from people was uh, they look for a work-life balance. That was the number one thing. Second was attractive salary and benefits. And third was towards job security. We did the same survey uh, just a, a couple of weeks back and the responses have kind of you know, changed. 
the number one priority has moved to job security second being work life balance and last being career progression which is a new entry into the priority list so with that i move on to deep sea now given that these are the findings that we are now getting from the employees and we believe that clearly hyper personalization is going to play an important role in employee experience in the future how do you envision the future over to you dipti yeah so before i answer that question for each i let me talk to you about amazon as a company and you know that amazon is a customer obsessed company and our global mission is that we have to be earth most customer centric company and we always work backwards from the customer need just to take an example of india itself you know it has got 20 different official languages and when we are trying to engage with customer we need to, the customer is a very diverse customer and we need to innovate completely in order to you know cater to their needs and it needs to be highly personalized because you know a customer does not just come to shop at amazon they come to you know discover new products understand trends share stories celebrate small success entertain through prime video movies paying bill making donations etc so our Endeavor has always been that the shopping experience should be as personalized as possible, as convenient, as interesting, and as seamless. Like no one would have taught anyone of us sitting here as to how do you navigate your way through Amazon website. It was so intuitive, it was so simple, and yet it is so personalized because every time you go there, it throws up something which would be relevant for you. just like we do that on our corporate website we feel that the hr offering needs to also be convenient interesting seamless and personalized in fact two examples that i can think about uh, is first you know um uh, around the covid time and and you all know that we have a, a a tool called connection which pops up a question every day on each employee's uh, laptop saying how do you feel about this or how do you feel about work life balance or how do you feel about your career progression have you had a discussion with your manager lately and so on and so forth what this thing did for us was that during covid time we used this tool to give deep insights on work from home experiences for our employees and that was a very critical input for us to make decisions during these times because different geographies different countries had different uh, kind of challenges and this this gave us real data for us to keep personalizing the kind of offerings that we were giving to our workforce across the globe the second example that i can think about is uh, again um, on um, is something that we did some time back we used to use chatbot uh, to you know answer employee queries and we went a step ahead and now we are leveraging alexa to engage with our workforce last year actually we launched an internal product that leverages alexa to respond to employee queries in a very personalized manner whether it is something that they want to ask about a culture nuance or they are new and they want to understand some of the ways or processes or very simple thing we felt that if a person comes to a new building and they want to find their way through the new building how do you you know just help a person get navigate their way so it's a very personalized skill that we kind of you know launched all that i can say is that you know uh, it is very imperative for organization to fast track their digi- digital transformation and technology such as artificial intelligence big data internet of thing virtual and augmented reality will be something that is is going to be future and it is something that uh, most companies need to adapt uh, as soon as possible thank you thank you so much deepthi i'm sure uh, uh, audiences must be really happy uh, you know listening to you uh, and especially the insight that you bring with this i actually come to preeti here now and uh, very very excited to hear from her given that the portfolio that she handles at great place to work we all know that social and mental well being has really kind of picked up a huge significance in the recent times and you see organizations really investing into this part so how do you really ptc connections and socializing in this new world of work and how do you think organizations and people can find a balance over to you preeti thank you anjali uh, it's always among top 3 priorities but uh, i think covid somewhere has brought it uh, 
absolutely center stage and uh, while you are thinking business this is this is an absolute parallel which runs and you mentioned social distancing i think one uh, mantra if i have to say is to say that okay we practice social distancing but we should remember that uh, ensure that while we are uh, all conscious cautious about uh, taking all precautions which are being recommended by the experts how do we still ensure that we are emotionally connected with our people and we have this one uh, question that we ask that my organization is psychologically emotionally a healthy place to work and i'm sure if you run that across the organization sitting here on this panel or among any of the best workplaces this question uh, will have a uh, employees are positive on this one statement they are five times more likely to say that organization but it is established now the question is how and uh, we talked about uh, these wonderful offices which fall started with and all there are simple ways that organizations are finding when we talk about uh, what deepi mentioned whether it is ai uh, big data etc uh, the application of the same thing how do you make that application uh, relevant even when you connect with your people so if you were onboarding people in person you would typically have a buddy and say that okay they will go and you know uh, step up for a lunch and how do you change that to a virtual lunch even that is equally important uh, most of the organizations would have gone and ensured that uh, there is access to a professional counselor uh, for their employees people have gone a step ahead in the current time right because the as we all know that the home and workplace is the same so uh, we ourselves are the place to work and many of our clients when we speak to them that same service is extended to the whole family so in case you want to have any of your family members also reach out to that counselor that is fine uh, another simple principle when you look at making decisions right for your employees and say that whether this will work or not should we take this decision or not should we modify this policy or not and how do you keep it simple and one thing that we looked at was a one family rule so initially all of us were i think just looking at that okay is, how long is this going to stay right now that acceptance has happened all of us have spent more than 100 days in this and we know it's long term so initially when we would meet we would say okay how long do we extend the lockdown if people have gone back to their homes they are stay, staying in rented apartments and they want to come back they want to plan right uh, and at the other side you have this anxiety this fear that do i travel back any of the uh, government guidelines because nobody really knows and then he said why keep that unwanted uncertainty right and uh, we said till march 2021 just you know be at home so don't worry about coming back if you want to be at home till march 2021 that's fine that's the first step then we'll look at it if you want us to help you set up basic offices or a workplace environment at home whether it's an ergonomic chair whether it is headphones whatever it is uh, we can help you do that but don't worry till march 2021 you know so that's out of the window then you can focus on what you are doing uh, and the rule was a one family rule a modification or a new one would i apply this for my own family members right so if i'm comfortable sending my own children my own siblings to work maybe that's the time i can uh, ask my employees to phone and speaking and today it is not for business and interestingly so many of our young people actually realize that i do the same thing with my client i do the same thing with my which is just to say hey how are you doing how have you managed things in the first 100 days is there anything that we can do to help you and from our re entire retail sector we had a one simple request and when we spoke to uh, you know rai which is the industry body and they said you know our our people are not working and if you could just run any uh, you know programs for our people which are training programs but something to keep them busy because right now they are sitting idle that adds to that mental anxiety and uncertainty so you know these were very simple things 
So if I have to look at three things you take away, one to say that, okay, uh, social distancing, but not emotional distancing, uh, keeping the one family rule as one simple guideline when you take decisions and connect, 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 connect virtually, but please connect with your people. Uh, you know clients on a daily basis and uh, keep an ear for listening especially for leaders I think we have to find ways uh, for continuous listening to our people because uh, you can't meet them day to day you can't look at their face and say hey uh, you seem to be disturbed so I think if you follow those two or two three things that really impacts uh, you know and, and helps us move towards a psychologically emotionally healthy workplace Thank you so much, Preeti. Um, may I now move on to Ira uh, with, uh, with a very interesting question. So as we know that uh, COVID-19 has really reset some major work trends and uh, definitely we need to envision and reimagine the new world of work. So with that, Ira, how do you see that happening and what is your perspective? And at the same time, how do you really see the social well-being and the mental well-being really playing a role at the workplace? Over to you, Ira. Thank you. Before I start, I'm just going to say to Anjali and Paul, thank you. I really appreciate being here. I really appreciate the award. And to both Deepthi and Mayank, congratulations. This is wonderful, really. So I have a lot to learn, I think, from the both of you and your organizations. Um, on your question, I think the most major work trend, at least to my mind, is the fact that um, what COVID has brought us is a shift from the ability to be choose to work from home to have to work from home right and that in and of itself is a very big shift it's now mandated it's no longer an option and uh, so as we examined this a little bit more closely at least at microsoft we did a bit of a study on um, how it's going uh, remote working in our company and there are no good or bad findings but what they have these this survey has done is it's given us a nice view of some nuances you know so i'll give you an example sales people are increasing collaboration time with customers increasing much more but manufacturing groups are streamlining and optimizing their connection points with their suppliers okay so it's not possible to say everybody is talking externally more or everybody's talking externally less manufacturing folks are doing a little bit less of supplier interaction sales folks are doing much more of customer interaction uh, there are some bright spots uh, for example multitasking uh, during uh, meetings didn't spike even if two people or three people are not in the same room, there's, it's not like I'm multitasking. Um, another one, for example, would be that, I think Mayank alluded to this, the blurring of work-life boundaries. Um, this has certainly told us that we need to dig into this a little bit more. Um, so I'll give you another example of this, for example, commute time. You know, people used to commute between meetings. It was time to sit back, think, reflect. Uh, now it's blocked with another meeting because there's no commute time, right? So how do we think about commute time and the impact of that on teams, organizations, people? Um, I think the other big theme is that we found it doesn't take much to shift a workplace culture, or at least to start to shift a workplace culture. Before the crisis, for example, we saw about 25% reduction in instant messaging during lunch. Typical lunch hours, instant messaging between people would go down about 25%. Um, you know, but now that reduction in instant messaging is down to 10%. Because, you know, lunchtime seems to be less exercised for my colleagues. Uh, there's much more night shift kind of working uh, because employees are using um, uh, uh, using the time between 6 p.m. and midnight, 52% more to get work done. Okay. Um, employees who had protected their weekends suddenly are not protecting it to the same extent. 10% of employees who previously had the least weekend collaboration, about 10% of weekend work with peers in a month, that's gone up by a multiple of three during COVID. So people, some people are working three times more on weekends. Um, the other big thing I think is managers and the role of managers. And so we've learned that managers are bearing the brunt of the shift to remote work. Uh, senior managers are collaborating on an average about eight hours or so more per week, eight hours more per week. And um, it's also interesting that if a manager checks in regularly with an employee uh, in the early stages of COVID, we found that the general working hours of those employees and managers didn't increase to the same extent as managers who didn't engage with their employees 
their engagement has increased. So the role of managers becomes important and data tells you that it's important, right? Um, and I think the third theme for us is that um, human connection continues to matter. People will find a way to get it and we need to enable that in our organizations, right? Because we continue to be social animals. Um, and so we believe at least at Microsoft that we don't want to replace one dogma with another. We don't want to go to everybody needs to come to work to only these roles need to come to work. Right? That's not where our mind is. And um, we do believe that a sense of connection is going to be intrinsically motivating. Um, and so what we do is uh, lots of um, uh, natural touch points which have gone away. Lunch in the cafeteria, stopping by somebody's desk to talk, having a cup of tea together, meeting in the corridor and chatting, you know. Um, has been replaced actually virtually. So social meetings went up 10% in a month in the survey we did. Um, you know, meet my pet, pajama day, coffee together, that sort of stuff went up virtually also 10% because people want it, right? Um, and scheduled one-on-ones went up 18%. So people want it. If I can't meet you in the corridor, I will set up time to meet you and put it on your calendar. And so networks are increasing, collaboration is increasing. And so we find that there is a shift in work, but it's not the same for everybody. Uh, different people have different needs. Folks who have parents, children, others to look after, the impact on them is different. Uh, folks who are living all alone and can't go back home, impact for them is different. Single parents, uh, impact for them is different. And so we need to help our people make choices uh, around life, health, and safety in a manner that I think Deepthi talked about hyper personalization and employee experience. We're thinking of that sort of thing in terms of the ability to cope. Um, both this as well as on mental health, because mental health is critical. Uh, and so we are creating very much in ability to make it comfortable. We've been doing this for a few years now, but more now, now more than ever, to ability to talk about mental health in a way that is open, clear, destigmatized, comfortable. Uh, and of course, we have the online resources and the counselors, etc., available. But the ability to have a conversation or to to be able to tell when somebody needs that help virtually is difficult. And so how do we make sure that we are on top of it, especially for our managers and leaders? So I'll stop there, but I will say that I think at the end of COVID, we're all going to come out as very different leaders. Um, you know, it's, it feels a little overwhelming, but I think if we, in Microsoft, we talk about the lens of growth mindset, right? And so the way we are thinking about it is we'll come out of this with much more resilience, much more grit and ways of working that we didn't imagine we could actually get good at. Absolutely. And I think thank you so much. And I cannot agree more with you because even a recent Gallup study says that employee engagement climbs when people have a choice to partially work from home and partially, you know, come to office. So thank you so much for really giving those insights to us. Uh, at Amsterdam as well, we have something called Be Kind to Your Mind. This is about really giving yourself a little respite, a little off time in the meetings, and uh, have a little bit of fun through Ramsted Carnivals as well. So yes, we completely agree with your viewpoint here, Ira. Okay, with that, uh, I come to a very interesting question, and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are really wanting to hear more on this, because you know one of the reasons a lot of people must have logged in is to really know what, what is the Amazon, Microsoft, or Samsung of the world doing, and what does Great Place to Work have to say about things? So very quickly, uh, I'll start with Mayank first. Uh, Mayank, what do you think is the secret sauce that Samsung has to be consistently be a part of the employer brand here? Uh, I think uh, you know the people per se is the is the core value of Samsung, right? Uh, whether we talk about the value system that Samsung has, the five values, people stands at the center, and that has been consistent for years, right? So all our practices which are around people have been consistent. Emerging, newer things which are in the business also which happens has to be connected with the human uh, side. So the the vision that the Samsung has, which is uh, you know making Samsung or uh, products, you know the products that Samsung manufactures or sells to the customers, they are made by humans. So the high tech technology which is coming outside, it is all ma made by humans. So hence your human uh, resources, which are the most critical ones, they need to be taken care of accordingly. Hence our value system, which talks about people at the center, is is what brings the consistency to what we do is what i can say thank you thank you so much mayank 
Deepti, can we hear from you? Sure. So we are a truly a company of builders and you know innovating on behalf of customers. In fact, uh, each Amazonian gets an opportunity to own and drive high impact project early on and pioneering at a size and scale never seen before. Um, in fact, it is a very, very enriching environment and it is one of that it, that it makes it so exciting for everyone to work at Amazon. Personally, for me, I feel Amazon is one of the safest place to fail. Employees are encouraged to experiment, innovate on behalf of customer and not get bogged down by failure. So I think that is what stands us apart. Thanks, Deepti. Ira, can we hear from you, please? I don't know if we are better than anyone else at all on anything, but I'll tell you what I think makes a difference to our employees, to my sense, my, my mind is um, our purpose, our mission, our company mission and our culture. And it's really, I think, born the test of time because over the last four or four years or so, it really is we walk the talk. And so our mission is to empower every person in every organization on the planet to achieve more. And that's assumed so much meaning in the last year right with covid and so on and i think our culture is fundamentally based in a growth mindset which comes with the assumption of humility i don't know but i will learn and it ends with making a difference and so there's a lot of meaning in there and in the middle we have customer centricity we have inclusion diversity and inclusion and we have one microsoft and so there's a lot of thing around collaboration and no individual heroism and so i think it's the meaning and the reality and the walking of the talk of our mission and our culture that I think elevates the reason employees choose to come to work. It's not about them. It's about a much bigger purpose which you're serving by working in a place which serves a much bigger purpose for the planet. So that is very meaningful to my mind. Thank you so much, Ira. Yes, indeed. And Preeti, uh, given that you are looking at organizations from a different lens, what do you have to say about being a great place to work? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for us, it's it's more of a privilege that we get to learn from thousands of organizations every year. So globally, maybe it's about 10,000 plus. In India, we work with a thousand plus every year. And uh, yeah, I think some of the things which Ira was saying uh, and the others said resonated. Uh, but when we look at data, uh, right, so I think the foundation, the absolute foundation of anyone wanting to build a great place to work or a high trust, high performance culture, as we call it, um, is fairness. Yeah, so trust sits at an absolute foundation of uh, what you are building. And though not easy, uh, and you will find that the benchmarks on, let's say, pride, etc., will typically be in the 90s, whereas something like fairness, which is about equity, am I treated as an individual, not as an individual, irrespective of my position? Do I get uh, fair treatment? Uh, do I have an opportunity to share my opinion and things like that? So that is absolute fairness and equity, which sits at foundation. Yeah. Having said that, if that is in place, then there are three C's which actually drive and that can uh, be, you know, you look at any culture and you can eventually bring them down to those three C's. And the first one is credibility. And you know, just mentioned walk the talk, right? Walk the talk is the first one. Uh, as a leader, do we uh, deliver on our promises? Do we walk the talk? So the first C for us is credibility. Uh, the second is care and uh, tell your people that you care but not just tell your people make them experience it and now i think we have opportunity in your organization during crisis times and that's care and the third c is enabling career growth so irrespective of the size the structure on the industry you look at uh, career growth will be among the top five drivers when an, when an employee looks at it, right? So I think all three of them mentioned it in their own way. So you're driven by a purpose of what your organization has and do I feel connected, but does the organization enable career growth opportunities? So fairness at the foundation and the three C's credibility, care and career growth. Uh, that is what we find in all global best workplaces. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Preeti, and thank you all the panelists for really giving your insight. I'm sure this was power-packed. 
Uh, we have few audience questions that have come up to us as you have been speaking. So uh, I'll just pick up and I'll uh, you know, probably ask one of you to answer. But if any one of you feels that you want to chime in and say something, please do add your perspective. Um, so first question, probably I'll ask you, Preeti, uh, uh, because you know the other questions I see uh, are around technology. So I'll let the other panelists pick on that. First question comes from Karan Shah. He's a CEO of Epoch Research Institute India, and he's asking, what are the top three to four driving factors that will determine a great employee experience post-COVID? Okay, thank you. That's a brilliant question. I think all of us have that top of mind, right? And uh, is there a post-COVID? Are we already started living the post-COVID in, in a way, right? So I think when I was talking about the three Cs, how do you build that credibility? But uh, somewhere we had this question that if you haven't built trust in your people earlier, can you build it during COVID? And you know the answer earlier. But if I have to simplify that for uh, and from an employee perspective, Karan, uh, it is to say that as that person is working in your organization, does he or she feel that yes? Uh, you know, I am equally a part of this organization. So while we are going through this crisis, we are going through this together. While we, uh, when a company makes profits, do I get a fair share of profits? As we grow and there are new opportunities, do all of us have equal opportunity for uh, growth and recognition? And if two simple principles, one is employee equal to customer. So Deepti was talking about the hyper-personalization, how Amazon, and very often we give that example for that customer centricity. Are we looking at an employee with the same lens? So that is the basic thing that they understand and they expect that yes, if two or three of those things, right? That if I'm a single parent, it is different. I have dependent parents in my house, it is different. I'm living alone, it is different. Do I understand that? Do I make the employee just the way I customize for the customer and the second one is uh, which every manager every leader can have as a principle is every interaction is an opportunity to build trust so we believe and data tells us that every time you have an interaction I'm having an interaction with you informal formal there's a invisible reservoir of, of trust and whether you draw from that reservoir or you add to that reservoir. yeah Employee is Thank not you. expecting the moon. They understand if we have to cut salaries, but it is to say that are we in this together? Can they reach out to you and expect an honest answer? And you know, we will move through this together. So thank you. Thank you so much, Preeti. Uh, I'll now move to Era. There is an interesting question from uh, Jotsna Joyce. She is a director of HR. And she's asking if tech and software industries have always practiced work from home to some extent. How do you see mainline uh, manufacturing firms and other traditional sectors adapting to embrace work from home, work from anywhere? What role will technology play in the adoption of uh, work from anywhere in these segments? So it's interesting because there are a few industry folks uh, from, from the manufacturing sector, diversified conglomerates actually, Indian conglomerates, who've been calling and speaking to me about this, HR heads, and asking actually how we are thinking about it. And it's no answers are straightforward. We're all figuring it out. But I think the truth of the matter is that even on the shop floor, HR leaders today are thinking of social distancing in shifts and they are implementing it. It's highly complicated. Uh, there's much more logistics costs involved in some cases. For example, one of the uh, car manufacturers uh, or, uh, was, was talking to me and saying that they've actually had to double their transportation costs because earlier the same uh, buses which ferried people to the factory uh, would also pick up the next shift as they were dropping. And now they can't anymore because there needs to be a half an hour sanitization break. Um, so they have to have a second fleet. Um, so there are all of those realities, but um, with the help of technology, what is at least I hear has enabled them is a couple of things. They have been able to identify what is called non-essential 
work also don't need to be at site to work from home because of the ability to leverage technology. The other thing I think that is happening is that uh, they are able to make sure through uh, large techno technological platforms, group technological platforms, that communication and information availability is in fact, in some cases, becoming much more efficient and much more at scale and real time. And that is helping them because, for example, if a quick case of COVID gets caught, you need to inform and you need to contact trace. Those are two things you need to do, and you can only do that using technology. So there are different things happening, but net net, I think the ability to leverage technological tools to communicate, to continue to do decision making and to keep employees safe and secure in those contexts where they don't have to be at the factory, at the shop floor. I think those are three or four ways in which they are leveraging it. Thank you, Ram. Sure, it has helped people in really thinking in those directions. I'll now move to Deepti. Uh, this is, there is a question from Malati, who's a director HR for Otera. Uh, what are other trends, new ways of working and interacting do you see coming to the fore in the next few years? Yeah, thank you, Malati, for that question. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, a uh, lot of things that have that we've seen during these times were not something that we had predicted for. In fact, we never would have thought that most of these things that we are doing virtually today would be would we wouldn't have imagined this, you know, a few months back. Uh, in fact, I remember uh, one of the things that we were discussing at Amazon was to move the whole new hire orientation virtual. But, you know, we did not do it for many years and suddenly with COVID coming in within one week, everything became virtual. So I feel that more and more uh, these kind of situations will come in future and we need to be prepared for situations like this. Communication would be something that would become more personalized and it would become something which would become more uh, one on one instead of us getting together as as groups and trying to figure it out it will become virtual i have heard a lot of experiments where a lot of companies are trying to see whether they can operate like 50% of their workforce permanently from from home instead of coming to office and there are new experiments that are coming uh, our way so i just feel that we are at a at a juncture where we've just started to uh, uncover the potential of the global workforce. And I think it will bring the workforce more and more closer because you end up being remote and it doesn't matter which country or which state you operate from. What matters is how are you able to connect, engage, empathize, as well as communicate with the workforce, irrespective of which region or country they are from. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deepthi. Wonderful empathy and compassion. Absolutely. And Mayank, uh, there is an interesting question uh, which has come uh, for you, uh, where we are looking at what are the ways uh, in terms of what is it that organizations can do when it comes to new technology? So do you have any suggestion you think where these are the technologies people can embrace as, as HR professionals into their organization and work from uh, anywhere? How is this going to succeed in the, in the new uh, world? Okay, so I look at it from two perspectives. One is that uh, what is the what is organization looking at, right? Technologies follow, but most important is what is that organization is looking at. If you're looking at most of your people will be working from home and more productive. There are many solutions which are already there in the organization in in the market, right? People have adopted well to any solution that you provide them. Uh, you pick up like in our organization we never used to have uh, or we used to have systems but the usage of these systems was very limited but when this this change started happening it is all the people all 100 percent of people are using this technology which is available so technologies which are inbuilt uh, you know in the organization you have your own it systems which works there are technologies which are available outside so there's no right or wrong to that. What what is that we can suggest? But it all depends upon what is your need, and what is that you actually want. So there are a lot of solutions which are available outside. But most importantly, you need to understand what is your need for that. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayank. So objective is important before we really get on to the new technologies. Uh, with that uh, and the audience questions uh, done, we have come to the closure of the webinar. 
Uh, and first of all, I really want to take this opportunity to thank each one of you. I think the very authentic responses, and I'm sure our audiences would have loved them. I saw the entire set of audience uh, being here in the webinar all throughout. We didn't see dropouts happening, which is a great thing, which means it was very, very engaging. Thank you once again. Uh, Paul, over to you for a thank you note for all our panelists today. Thank you, Anjali. Thank and, you. And thank you. Thank you to all the panelists for uh, an extremely insightful discussion. I have a bunch of notes here on my iPad. Thank you. Uh, I think today was more than just an award ceremony. It was uh, a masterclass in <laughs> how to build a really special organization, you know, um, an organization with impact, an organization that puts people at the center. And a few golden nuggets that we'll all take away today. I think one of those is, um, is around compassion and care. Right? It all begins with, with caring for our people. And we've seen that over the past few months. I would say myself as a leader, I've, uh, as Ira said, uh, I've, I've had to put on some new muscle as a leader. I've had to develop some new abilities and traits that I didn't necessarily need pre-COVID. You know, and Marshall Goldsmith has a wonderful book which says, what got you here won't get you there. I think a lot of what got us here to pre-COVID will indeed be in moving forward, but there are some new things and new capabilities that leaders need to develop but also organizations as we move forward technology of course but not just for the sake of technology technology for touch technology to connect better uh, to earn trust to build credibility and ultimately to create that sense of belonging that we're all aiming for because ultimately that's what uh, the best companies do they make they hire great people they make them feel welcome they engage with them and they help them shine and that's really our mission as leaders. On that note, I get to hold this trophy for a bit more until uh, I hand it over officially to you all. So on behalf of Randstad, I wanna say congratulations to Amazon, to Samsung and to Microsoft on excellence, not only in employer branding, but in creating an environment where people are safe and cared for and where they can shine. So congratulations again, everybody. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you once again, thank everyone. You so and thank you. So much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and stay safe.